Today we're going to introduce you to logarithm laws, or rules of logarithms, however you want to say it. And uh, they're very, very similar to the, the laws that we learned for exponents, and, or the properties of exponents. And in my opinion, I think the logarithm rules are a little bit easier than the exponential ones. So to our big goals today are we're going to see we're going to introduce you to three new laws. The first one is called the product law. Um, again, very similar to the one we saw with the exponents. We're going to also introduce you to the quotient one, and then we're going to introduce you to the power law or the power rule. And we're going to introduce you to those three laws real quick, and then we're going to go tackle uh, uh, many, many examples because we're going to need lots of repetition to get used to these and develop a, a sense of comfort with them. And then we'll be ready to tackle the new assignment tomorrow in class. This is definitely one of my, my very favorite uh, videos of the year, so hopefully uh, you'll have a similar opinion by the time we're done or maybe a couple days from now after you get a little more practice under your belt. But uh, the first thing I want to start off with here on the product law is just recall what we know about properties of exponents. If we said b raised to the x times b raised to the y, that would be equivalent to saying b raised to the x plus y power. In other words, we just added the exponents. Well, so our new law today says if we have log base b of x times y, we can expand that and say log base b of x plus log base b of y. Now as we're writing that out you can kind of get a taste of how important your handwriting and your notation is going to be. So just really talk yourself up and get some good notation going here tonight. That's going to be super super important. Um, now as far as the terminology we use, if we go from if we go from left to right that's called expanding. We're expanding the log. But if I go from right to left then we're doing what's called condensing. We're condensing the log. And um, so we're going to get a lot of practice with both of them going from this expression over to the sum of these two and vice versa. Maybe starting with this one and going to this one here. Okay, so let's warm up with a couple of real quick examples. Let's say they gave me log base 2 of the quantity 5x and the directions might say to expand you know, or to find an equivalent expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's really log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of x. Now why did I use a plus sign? Well the key is we saw multiplication right here. This was 5 as you read this. This is 5 times x. So we're going to expand it and use an addition sign. Now the opposite of that is they may give us an expression like, and again, the base is irrelevant. doesn't matter whether it's base 2 or base q or base anything. Let's say we had log base 6 of 4 plus log base 6 of a. Now, you notice how there are two terms right here. There's a grand total of two terms. What they're going to ask us to do now is, because it's already expanded, they're going to ask us to do the opposite. They want us to condense this expression into just one term. So I would say if I condensed it, I would have log base 6 of what quantity? Well, I would say 4 times a and just write 4a. Okay, first of all, before we introduce you to the quotient rule for logarithms, I want you to recall something you already know about exponents. Uh, b raised to the x power divided by b raised to the y power equals b raised to the x minus y power. So today you're going to see some similarities, some carryover. If I gave you log base b of x divided by y, we could expand that out and say log base b of x minus, there's the similarity, log base b of y. So there's your property right there. And if you go from left to right, you're expanding. If you go from right to left, you are condensing. Okay, our third rule is called the power rule. And again, recall, what do you know about exponents? We know that if we have b raised to the x, and then we wanted to raise that entire expression to the y power, we would multiply the two exponents together and get b raised to the x y power. So today, let's say we have log base b of x raised to the y. Today what we're going to do is we're going to say y times 
log base b of x. In other words, what used to be the exponent is now the coefficient. Uh, we could sometimes we say it just travels down in front and lands right there. So for instance, just to give you an example, let's say we had log base b of x to the fourth power. We could write that as four times log base b of x. Okay, as we get ready to try some live examples, one of the habits we're going to get into tonight is we're going to name the properties or the laws that we've used. We're going to say whether we use the product, the quotient, or the power law as we get going. And so they want to know which of the following is equal to this expression right here. So ask yourself, what do you see happening? What operation is being used between the 9 and the x? And I would say, well, because the 9 is multiplying the x, we are most definitely going to use our product law which is the very first one of the night. So you can just refer back to your notes, look at that very first one we wrote, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this one out. I'm gonna say log base three of the nine plus log base three of x. Now, unfortunately, none of the choices match my answer quite yet, and the reason is, is because that first term can be simplified, all right? You, we've evaluated log base 3 of 9 in the past, so I'm going to make a little note here that we're going to evaluate this first term. You notice there's no variables here in this first term, so I can go further. And really what I'm doing off to the side here is I'm saying, okay, it's got to equal something, right? So I'll go around the world, and I'll say 3 raised to what power equals 9? That's an A there, so it's supposed to be a 2, so that whole expression is a 2. And then there's nothing I can do with the second term here because there's a variable in it. And you'll notice it matches choice number three really well. All right, our second example, let's try to identify what property or what law we're going to use. What's happening between the x squared and the 1,000? They're being divided, right? So let's tell ourselves we are going to use the quotient law which is the second one we just wrote in our notebook, so we can refer back to that. And as I expand this one term, see right now it's just one log term, and as I expand it into two terms, I'm going to use a minus sign. So I could say the log of x squared minus the log of 1,000. Now one of my questions to you is, what base am I working with? What base am I working with? Well, this is a base 10. It's an invisible. We call it the common base. So if you want to put a 10 in there, you're more than welcome to. It's an optional technique. Okay. Now, in order to, uh, again, I don't, what I have right now does not match any of the choices. So what I'm going to do now is on the first term, I'm now going to use the power law. And the power law says the exponent can move and become the coefficient. So I'm going to rewrite that as 2 times the log of x minus. Now what I'm going to do here with this term is because there's no variables in play, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate it. And I'm thinking to myself, 10 raised to what power equals 1,000? And I would say the power of 3. So this entire term just became a 3 is all. And let's see, which choice looks really good? I like choice number one. All right, this one's a bit tricky here, to say the least. They, they started off by saying that A is equivalent to the log of 3, and B is equivalent to the log of 2. And they want to know which of the following correctly expresses the value of log of 12 in terms of A and B. Now, we have to be rather creative here. We're going to have to think outside the box. How can we rewrite the 12 in terms of a 3 and a 2 because that's the cards we were dealt, so to speak? Does everybody agree? Let's see if I can move this down a little bit. Okay. Does everybody agree that 12 is equivalent to 4 times 3? All right. And then that's really equivalent to 2 squared times 3. Now you're wondering, why would you have to rewrite the 12 like that, or how would I even know to do that? But just remember the cards that we were dealt. We were dealt the log of 3, we were dealt the log of 2, so I'm only allowed to work in terms of 2 and 3, and that's why I rewrote it. So, so what I'm going to say is, the log of 12 is really equal to the log of 2 squared times 3. Just substituting 2 squared times 3 in for the 12. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first of all, I'm going to use my product law, which says the log of 2 squared plus 
the log of 3. I saw multiplication, so I instantly moved to addition. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my um, power rule so that again the exponent can move to the coefficient and I'm going to say 2 times the log of 2 plus the log of 3. Now if we refer back to the original definitions, what is the log of 2 equivalent to? B. So this is really 2 times B. And what's the log of 3 equivalent to? They said A, so I'm just going to say plus A. Notice it's not the log of B or the log of A. It's just B and it's just A. So it matches up with choice 4 really well. All right, now I know we're throwing a lot at you tonight. We're, we're throwing the, these three rules in a combination. We're mixing them all together and so forth. But we're going to try to move just a touch faster now that we've got three under our belt. What rule are you using here? We're going to use the quotient rule right away. That's the first one I'm going to use. So I'm just identifying that. There's a quotient law. And I'm going to say log base 2 of x, uh, I should say radical x, minus log base 2 of y to the fifth power. Again, handwriting is going to be super, super important here. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rewrite that first term so that the x is being raised to the one-half power. Uh, anytime you have a radical sign, I want you to instantly use an exponent of one-half. Now I'm going to use my power law where these exponents can travel. Okay, The exponents can travel. And I'm going to say 1 half times log base 2 of x minus 5 times log base 2 of y. And let's see if we can match any of the choices. Notice I didn't show you the choices early on. I want to try to match them up now. And I think winner, winner, chicken dinner. We've got the right coefficients and the minus sign in the middle. So that's what you want to focus on. Get the right coefficients and get the right operation in between the two terms. Okay, so more good practice. Now, I tell you what, if you're starting to feel confident, go ahead and try this one on your own. Otherwise, if you're feeling really overwhelmed, then just stay right here with me. Um, let's use our quotient rule. And I could rewrite it as log base 3 of radical 5 minus log base 3 of 27. Just like on the last slide, that radical sign, let's rewrite it so the exponent is 1 half. That's just a given minus log base 3 of 27. Now what I'm going to do on the first term is I'm going to use my power rule that says the 1 half can travel and become the coefficient. So 1 half times log base 3 of 5. Now what I'm going to do with the second term is I'm going to make a note here. I'm evaluating this term. 3 raised to what power equals 27? I would say 3 raised to the third power equals 27. And so I'm just going to go back up here and I'm going to match up the appropriate choice. Um, oh boy, what is, I'll tell you, which one is equivalent? I would say, it's a little tricky here, I would say the first one is equivalent because if you divided both of these terms by 2, it is focusing, especially if you divided that last term by a 2, you'd get the 3 that we have down here. So that's a match. Okay, our next example is a review for a composition of functions. That's what we have right here. This is called a composition of functions. In other words, uh, we are substituting one function into another. We want to take the function g of x, which is this term right here, and we're going to substitute it into this guy right there. So I'm going to say f of g of x is equivalent to the log of... 100x cubed. And now we're just going to expand it out and try to figure out which one's equivalent. So I'm going to use my product law, log of 100 plus, why did I use plus? Well, we had multiplication right here, the log of x cubed. For the first term, I'm just going to evaluate, and I'm going to say 10 raised to the second power equals 100. And then on the the second term right here, I'm going to use my power rule, and I'm going to say 3 times the log of x. Just remember that exponent can travel. Talk yourself through it, and I think that's going to match choice number 4. Really nice. All right, example number 8. We're throwing you a monster curveball because both of the, both the 32 and the x to the 7th are within the radical sign. So first move, I want you to instantly rewrite it so that the entire quantity, 32x to the 7th, is being raised to the 1 half power. 
And I want you to make a note here. We have to use our power law first. All right, power law first. This is not an optional move. We have to make sure this gets used first before the product. And so I'm going to rewrite it as one half times log base two of 32x to the seventh. Now we are not allowed to distribute that one half through, so it's got to it's got to stay out in front. That's my only option. Now I can use the product law second. All right, now we're allowed to use it. So let's say let's say the one half stays out front. And now I'm going to say log base 2 of 32 plus the log base 2 of x to the 7th. I like square brackets for some reason. Um, these hard parentheses are in other words. But if you want to just use soft normal parentheses, you're more than welcome to. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to evaluate this first term. 2 raised to what power? 2 raised to the 5th power equals 32. And I'm going to use my power law one more time where the 7 comes down base 2 of x, and that's my final answer. Let's just go, scroll up and see if we can find a match here. 1 half, and we need the 5, and I think that's going to match number 2 perfectly. Okay, now believe it or not, every single example we've done so far tonight involved expanding, expanding. So now what we're going to do is we're going to condense one here. So let's make that... Ex we, let's tell ourselves we are going to condense. So if we have to go back and look this example up tomorrow, we know how to do some condensing. In other words, if I said the log base, um, I'll just, I'm going to make up a random example here. Log base 2 of x minus log base 2. And they do have to be the same base, otherwise we're up, the, up a creek without a paddle. Log base 2 of m. We could condense it into one log. Okay, notice... We're only allowed to use, when we condense it, we're only going to use one log, and that's going to be the x divided by the m. How did I know to use division, you're wondering? Well, because I saw a minus sign. Anytime we see subtraction, it's going to be tied with division. And so let's use this problem right here. We're going to condense it into one term, and I'm going to say log base 4 of, it's going to be the first term divided by the second term. So I got y squared minus 16 divided by y plus 4. And now all I need to do is just simplify what's inside the, that quantity right there. Because we could certainly uh, factor the numerator into y plus 4, y minus 4. And then we got our y plus 4 down here. So let's cancel those out. And my final answer is going to be log base 4 of the quantity y minus 4. Make sure you got your parentheses in there. And let's go match up one of the winning choices here. Let's go with choice number Choice number two. Well, we're, we're down to our last example tonight, and so if you're feeling brave, uh, by all means, go ahead and try this one. Uh, you know, mute or hit pause, whatever you want to do to get rid of me, and just try this one on your own. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and tackle it. And again, we're going to have to be creative. You know, this is uh, similar to one of the ones earlier where we were dealt certain cards, and they said, I'm only allowed to work in terms of log of seven. So I want to try to rewrite this using a 7. And when I saw the 4,900, the first thing I thought of was 49 times, well, 100. And then I said, well, 49 is really uh, 7 squared. So it's 7 squared times 100. And now I'm going to go ahead and expand it. And I'm going to say the log of 7 squared plus the log of 100. And what rule am I using or what law am I using? Yeah, I, mean, I just use my product law. Now, what am I going to use next? I think I'm going to use my power law that says the two can come here. I want to kind of isolate that log of seven the best I can. And they said the log of seven is equivalent to k. So I'm going to substitute the k. And I'm going to evaluate this 10 right here, raised to what power? Raised to the second power equals 100. If you want to factor the two out, you're more than welcome to. And let's go and find a matching choice. And it looks like, yes, they did factor theirs. Let's go with choice number one. So let's make sure, what do we need to know tomorrow before we walk into class? What do we absolutely have to know? we got to know the three laws inside now. If you have to make flashcards, make them right now and start memorizing them and quizzing yourself. But let's make sure we know that multiplication, okay, is tied to addition. Let's make sure we know that division is tied to subtraction. And let's make sure we know that if we have a power, like an exponent, it's allowed to move into the coefficients place. Okay, good luck tomorrow.